Welcome to this session on Open Form Tutorials. Here we'll see command line operations on the Ubuntu terminal. Uh, these are basically uh, simple Linux uh, commands useful for setting up and running Open Form. The prerequisites for uh, carrying out all these uh, actions are you need an Open Form installation either on a native Linux or on a Windows WSL Ubuntu. A separate ins uh, instructions for how to install uh, Open Form on Windows is given uh, in an, the link below. Firstly, you have to open a terminal. On Windows, it is uh, WSL uh, Linux, uh, uh, WSL Ubuntu um, should have been installed. And you go to the uh, taskbar and launch the Ubuntu app. So Ubuntu app in this case is 22.04 and you can search for it, click on it. This will open the Ubuntu terminal. This is the Ubuntu terminal. On a native Linux, uh, you can get uh, terminals something like this. Uh, you have to type uh, control shift T, which will open this terminal. Or you can search for terminal icon in the applications and click on that icon. Terminal icon looks like this. So what are uh, terminals and uh, command prompts? We've already seen during installation of OpenFoam that we had copy pasted several uh, text and uh, uh, executed certain commands. So what we're going to tell you more is about what is the meaning of these things that we actually did. Command line, as you recall, is uh, typing on a terminal prompt. So this is a terminal. Anything that you type here is called as a command line execution. Now, as we saw before, all terminals have a prompt. And the prompt here is some text followed by a dollar symbol. So I'm going to type uh, who am I and press enter. So this will show my username. So who am I enter? My username is Sundar. So it shows like this. So I just type who am I and enter. It shows a username. So what does a command do? So anything that you type on this terminal is called a, the first word of anything that you type is called as a command. And that command usually throws out some text. In this case, this command throws through, through this text called Sundar. And after it through the text, it will come back to the prompt. So I can type this again and it shows the same thing. And the prompt is already there. I can type the next command. So command line is essentially series of commands you type. It will do some action and then come back to the prompt. To quit this app, you have to say that exit and press enter. So I type exit. And when I press enter, this window will disappear. Basically, the terminal is closed. To start the terminal again, I go back to the launch and then launch the uh, Ubuntu app. So when I launch the Ubuntu app, I get back the terminal. Um, in Linux, the uh, folder structure is called as a directory structure. So directory means a folder in Linux or in any Unix systems. There are major directories are organized as follows. The topmost directory is called as the root directory. It is simply denoted by a slash symbol. So slash means the root directory. Under root directory, there are several uh, uh, directories. Some of the common ones are displayed here. Every user has a, uh, their own uh, directory. In my case, um, my home directory is there in slash home, slash, then slash home, then Sundar. Sundar is also a directory under home. So this is a directory under slash, and under home, I have Sundar. Uh, some of these uh, directories uh, have some special meanings. As a normal user, we cannot access uh, things in this uh, directory that you cannot make any changes to them. That's why in general, Unix is or Linux is more secure than in Windows. 
So the bin uh, directory or user and under that there is a bin directory contains a lot of applications or commands. So binary applications or commands which you type on the prompt are stored in this directory called bin or user bin. ETC contains a configuration files for the system, configuration files. Home contains all your private um, files which belongs to you. If there are other users in the system, then your files will not be visible to them and their files will not be visible to you by default. Temp is a scratch directory where you can uh, use that to store uh, TMP, it's uh, pronounced as temp, but it's TMP in short. So temporary uh, files where anybody can uh, store it for some time. When you reboot the system, then all these uh, files in this temp directory will go away. Again, var is another directory called as uh, for variable uh, uh, files. Basically, these are runtime files which are used by the system. So you don't need to know any of these things for running open form, but it's good to know the general uh, structure of how uh, directories are organized in Linux. Now, uh, one important thing to remember is that in terminal, we execute commands, right? So pwd is a command. So or uh, when you installed uh, Linux, you did sudo apt up, update and so on. So all these things are commands. And all commands are executed on a specific, inside a specific directory. <clears throat> so, you, uh, so the meaning of these commands may change when you uh, run from different directories. So it is important to know which is the current directory you are working on. So for finding out that the command is pwd. So pwd means present working directory. So if you type pwd and hit enter, it will show you home sundar. So by default, when you open the terminal for the first time, and then you type pwd, you will get sundar. So you have to type pwd and hit enter, then you will get sundar. Then um, other directories have some special meaning, double dot. Double dot means parent directory. Single dot means current directory. So, so if I say cd dot dot means I'm going one directory above. So what is my current directory? It is Sundar. What is one directory above is home. So when I put cd dot dot, I go to the parent directory, which is home. So if I type pwd here, it will tell me that I'm under home directory slash home. So under slash home is Sundar. So if I want to go back to my um, own folder, I can type cd dollar home in capital. Then I type pwd, I'm there in Sundar. Again, I go to slash home. Then you can also type cd tilde. Tilde, tilde means your home directory or dollar home is your home directory. Either of these things you can use or simply type CD. By, if you just type CD, CD means change directory, you will go to the your home directory. So all this output you can check, uh, type out various of these things and you see that there are different ways. You can use CD tilde, CD home or just CD to get to your home directory. Now, the directory paths are um, um, separated by a slash. So entire directory of your current directory from the root is called as the path. So whatever you type using PWD, this is the entire path of the current directory. Why we need to know this? Because Whenever you are executing a particular command in open form or any other thing, it is important to know where you are executing it. So always check where you are executing it. Now, there is a quick way to uh, check that. That is, in the prompt itself, you will see the directory displayed. Here, it shows as tilde. 
So remember tilde means home directory. So after this colon, before the dollar, it will show you the current directory. So now my PWDO is Sundar, home Sundar. If I do CD dot dot, then the current directory is slash home, which I can check like this present directory is, that is also displayed on my uh, prompt. So this is a useful way to know where you are executing the command. Some commands may not work properly. Like for example, you're running open form. You have to be in that particular directory where your input files are there. If you run it in your home directory, open form will not give results. So it's important that you know in on which directory you are running this applications. So in this case, um, home Sundar is my home directory. I, uh, I can shift to a different directory directly by specifying the path. So this is uh, one example structure I've shown. There is this home directory under which I have Sundar. I also have TMP, which is a temp directory, which is in the same level as uh, home. And under that, I also have user. And under user, I have bin and local. And under local, I have bin. So I am initially lo located here, which is home Sundar. Suppose I want to go to this directory and execute a command there. All I need to do is the give the path, the full path of this folder, this directory. The full path of this directory is slash user slash local slash bin. So I have to type cd space slash user local bin and hit enter. Then I go to that directory. Notice that it shows the uh, directory name in the prompt. Now I can also, I'm, I came back to home directory now in tilde. Now I can also go to a sister directory. I don't have to give the entire path. All I have to say is cd dot 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 means parent. Okay. In this case, uh, it is uh, slash home. Okay. Now, where is, um, is there any sister for uh, Sundar? There is no, but there is a sister directory for home, which is temp. So now I'm under home directory. I say cd dot dot slash tmp. So when I say cd home from home, if I type dot dot slash temp, dot dot in this case is the parent directory, which is root directory, which is slash. And from there I go to temp. So I am already in temp directory. So th these are uh, short forms for the directory. So cd dot dot means parent directory. Dot means current directory. So dot is a current directory. Dot dot is a parent directory. Very often we would like to know what is inside a directory. Remember, you don't have something like a Windows File Explorer where you can open and check what are the direct, what are the folders and directories or files that are present. So everything in uh, Linux terminal is to be typed and then the output will be shown. There is no graphic user interface for a terminal prompt. Of course, you will have other applications which are not uh, there in your uh, terminal, but for open form installation, if you are not on Windows, uh, if you're not on native Linux, you have to get used to this terminal, uh, this uh, terminal application, and which is also useful because when you want to run large simulations, large simulations are usually run on a cluster and cluster is remote. And in the remote cluster, you can only get a terminal access and you will not get a easily available uh, uh, direct uh, graphic user interface, just like uh, Windows Explorer. So it's very important to get used to this terminal access and to find out the list of uh, what are the files and folders that are there uh, in this, uh, any particular directory, you can type the command called as ls. Usually, a lot of um, Unix commands have, are shortened by just two letters or three letters. LS means list the files in the current directory. So if I go to cd slash, which is the root directory, and type LS, it will show me all the files. Remember, we had seen some typical files in the home and the root directory, home, etc, uh, bin, 
then user bin that is user user is here then temp all these directories are uh, sub directories in the root directory on the slash directory so we can type that so this cd slash and if i type ls i will see a different set of uh, files here now often what happens is the terminal has got a lot of text that is displayed whatever you type here is displayed at the bottom suppose you don't want this clutter well, you can type to get a clean state you can type clear so if you do a clear the screen will get cleared and you will get the prompt at the top of the window so now you have the prompt at the top of the window and this is equivalent to cls if you're familiar with windows uh, command prompt it is cls in windows command prompt in unix it is called as clear so if you just type clear we will so this is a, a, a screen with a lot of text if i type clear i get a clean slate and the prompt is on the top now um sometimes it's uh, important to know how to create new directories because in when you run for every case in open form you will be creating new directories for each run so for that you need to know how to create and delete directories to create directories we use the command mkdir mk stands for make dir so make directory is mkdir and this is the name of the directory like in windows you create a new folder this is a simple it just with one command you can type and uh, get a directory done so make dir means create a directory named as docs and uh, cd docs means you are changing the directory to docs so let's see this is my home directory i don't have anything when i type ls there is nothing here so first thing i do is make dir docs if i type ls i have the docs folder there this is a docs folder then i say cd docs cd means change directory and the name of the directory the name of the directory is docs and then i go there so notice that the prompt has changed it is tilde slash docs tilde means home directory slash separator and docs so i can come back if i want to delete the directory i can simply type rm dir rm is a short for for remove i say docs so rm dir docs deletes the directory if i type ls then there is nothing in the home directory this it's empty uh, this is uh, possible if the directory does not have any contents but if the directory has contents you cannot delete them so what you have to do is you let's say there is a directory called uh docs and under docs there is another directory plots and under that there is a directory called two so if you say make make dir minus p space docs slash plots slash two so if i want to delete this entire if i type ls i have docs here and if i type ls docs i know what is inside docs inside docs is plots so if i type ls docs slash plots slash two plots then it will show me two now if you want to delete a directory and all of its contents till the end i have to type rm rm minus fr docs so if you say rm minus fr it will forcibly delete directories and all its contents recursively f stands for force r for recursively so it goes and deletes all the but you have to be very careful if you delete this for an important folder then there's no way you can uh, recover it ls there is nothing so there is no trash bin or anything if you delete it is gone so be very careful when uh, executing this command it is useful because many times you want to delete so in this case make sure that you are doubly sure before you type this command rm minus fr now there is a, a simple way to create um uh, type this commands so this is called as a command line completion now you till now you saw that i had typed a lot of things on the uh, keyboard but uh, for certain uh, commands and for certain words 
Linux can automatically complete it for you. So that is called as a command line completion using the key called the tab key, the tab key, which is there on your keyboard. So let us try and see how it looks. So first I say make dir minus p dot slash plot slash two. Okay. Now I can type ls docs, I will get plots. Now, if you want to find what is under the plots, I just, I don't need to type, I say ls, I say d and say press, I don't type any character, but I press the character called tab. So it will automatically fill it for me. So under tab, I can type p and then tab because that's it automatically completes this and one more tab it'll do the two so uh, because a lot of things are command line driven and you need to type in many cases if there is only one way to uh, there's only one word then automatically uh, by pressing tab linux will complete it for you so you don't have to uh, type in a lot of things many things will automatically complete for you uh, so, so far, whatever we have done are called as commands. Now we are going to learn but about the structure of these commands so that you know how they are written. So all commands that you type on a prompt have got two parts to it, the command and there are arguments. In some cases, there are only commands. In some cases, there are command and arguments. For example, CD is a command, LS is a command. It does not have any argument. Whereas make dir minus p docs plots two is a command followed by arguments. So let us look at this and break up uh, this make dir and see what it means. So the first word that you type on a prompt is called as a command. And that is followed by arguments. So this is one argument, this is another argument. There are some special arguments which are uh like this that is they are prefixed by a minus sign so when an argument is prefixed by a minus sign they have special interpretation called as an option they are called as command line arguments and options of uh, this commands and then you have the second argument here which is the name of the directory so what this says is create a directory called this minus p means uh Suppose these two directories don't exist, you cannot create this directory. So what this minus p will do is it will create entire path of directories, p is for path. So entire path of directories, all the three directories will be created. Remember, we didn't have docs before, we didn't have plots, we didn't have two. Instead of creating docs and then creating plots inside it and then creating two inside it, you give it by a single command by specifying the entire path. So in this example, make dir is a command, minus p is an option, and this is an argument. Usually in Linux, a lot of these uh, commands uh, have several arguments, right? What you see is only a limited. When you, uh, if you want to know more about this, uh, you can read help files of this make dir to tell you what are the possible arguments that are uh, available. Now, if there are more than one argument, you can also write it like this. So you combine more than one option, that is key here, F and R are two keys. You can combine them by single minus F minus and F and R together. This is actually equal to minus F space minus R. So instead of typing minus F minus R docs, you can si simply write minus FR docs. So what this means is minus F means forcibly remove all the things. Minus R means go recursively inside it. So there are two options I have given to RM. And uh, instead of typing this fully, minus F space minus R, we can type it as minus FR. So this is a short form of all the optional arguments with a single minus sign. Another thing that is important to know for running open uh, form is what are called as variables. So these are called shell variables or command line shell variables. So variables are usually assigned values. So if you're familiar with programming languages, the variable name comes on the left-hand side and the value comes on the right-hand side. 
And in case of uh, uh, this, you have to specify by an equal to without any space before or after the equal to sign. So if I type my name equal to Sundar, it basically assigning the value Sundar to the variable name my name. If I want to see what is there inside this my name, I have to type dollar my name. So dollar my name will get the value of this. This is just storing it. If I want to get the value of this, so dollar my name shows the value that is stored in this variable called my name. So Sundar, when you type echo, echo is a command. This is an argument. So echo, I'm asking something it to do something. Echo dollar my name will show the value stored in this variable my name. Similarly, you remember we had used a variable called dollar home. That also is a default variable provided by Linux. Dollar home has the path of my home directory, which is slash home slash sumo. Now, this much is sufficient to understand and run our first open form solver. So firstly, what we are going to do is to create a directory for our all our open form runs. Here we type make dir minus p dollar form run. So what is form run? Form run is a variable and dollar form run gets the value of that. So if you say make dir form run, I, it, you would have created a directory and you can go inside that directory. So let's do that now. I'm there in my, let me clear the screen. I'm there in my uh, home directory. Uh, first, let me see uh, what is what is there in this variable called form run. So I'm saying echo form underscore r. I can type tab, tab also. If I type tab, it will complete it. So form run. So what is form run? Form run is a path, form, sundar, open form, sundar 10. 10 stands for open form version and under that run. So if you have more than one version of open form, you typically create it as a separate directory so that you can preserve the old runs. So first I need to create a path of this entire directory. So first I do make the minus p because I need to create the entire directory form run. Okay, so this is equivalent to typing make their minus p slash home home slash sundar slash open home slash sundar 10 slash run. So instead of typing all these things, I can just type by single command called form run. So then I can go to form run. What is my present working directory? It is open form sundar 10 run. You can also see that the prompt also has the open form sundar 10 run under my home directory, which is still there. Then I copy the from form tutorials. So once you have installed form uh, open form, all the tutorials are stored in this directory called form tutorials. Let's see what is form, where is form tutorials. So I type echo form tutorials. So it is there in a folder called OPT, Open Form 10 Tutorials. So all the Open Form installation comes with a uh, default set of uh, default set of tutorials. Now, if I want to go to my previous command, I can use the up arrow. So I go to all the previous. I can look at a, all the history of previous command. Down arrow, I'll come back to the latest command. So I go to all this. Uh, form tutorials. Let's say I want to see what are the files. So if you want to edit, I can go to uh, select a previous command, move my cursor key and type. So I want to see what are the directories in this uh, form tutorial. Let's say ls form tutorial. So it shows a lot of tutorials. So basic, compressible flow, combustion, electromagnetics, a heat transfer, compress incompressible flow, multi-phase, stress analysis. These are default tutorials that are available when you install open form. Uh, just by having this is not sufficient. You have to look at how to run them in your uh, directory. So for that, you need to search for the uh, uh, associated uh, uh, help files. Help files are not so 
um, easily accessible. But if you do a Google search or in YouTube, you will find how to use this. In our own course, we'll show you how to do this, uh, how to use these tutorials and make your own variations. Okay. Now, what we want is from this form tutorials, we want uh, from incompressible solvable, sim simple form fits daily. So what I have to do here is I go to the slides and I copy this entire text as a single thing. Okay, it's not three different lines. This is a single line I copy. And I come to this. I go to CD dollar foam run. Okay. And there in this directory, PWD, which is uh, uh, Sundar 10 run. And here I'm going to copy. CP is the short form for copy. So I'm going to copy all the files from this directory, which is simple form fits daily to dot. Okay, from and to. So from is this, to is the present directory. Remember, single dot means present directory, double dot is the parent directory. So CP minus R means it copies all the files recursively under this and uh, till the end. So I have copied this. I'm going to right click now and paste it. So I've pasted. Notice that although here you have three lines, here it will come as a single line only because this are, there is no actual line break. Here. This is just in the slides, you can see it as three lines, but it's only a continuous line. So CP minus R, form tutorials, encompasses simple form, fits daily dot. So which means this will create this directory under the run directory. Okay. So if I type LS, I will have fits daily here. So I have this pitch daily here, which is all the files that were provided in the tutorial section. You know, we cannot go and run our commands here because this is, you cannot write to this, but you can create it here, create a copy of this entire directory in your run directory, and then you can run it here. So once I have created that, I have to get inside that full directory. So I say CD, pitch PI, and I just have to type tab. So it'll automatically complete it, say repeat daily. And the first thing we need to do is if I type LS, it has got, these are the default things that are there in open form. We'll tell you this in the uh, another lecture, but these are the contents that got copied from your form tutorials. So firstly, you need to draw the, uh, create the mesh uh, for the solver. So you type block mesh. You can type block and type tab block M and type tab, it will write complete it as block mesh, not a capital M and hit enter. So when you hit enter, it will, if I, I can scroll up using my mouse to see what happened. So I typed block mesh and it showed me all these things. Okay, so I can scroll up or scroll down on this terminal window because terminal always has something or the other that is uh, popped out and many things will just run very fast. So if you want to go and look back, you use your mouse and uh, scroll up. Okay. So remember we type block mesh and these are the output that block mesh gave. So what it did, it took the geometry and then it started meshing, found out how many uh, boundary faces are there. We'll see about this later, but essentially it's uh, running all these things and created it without any error. So if there is no error, you should uh, see that this is completed. The next one is the actual solve. Once you've got the uh, mesh, now we have to solve. So the solver for this is called a simple form. So I type simple and tab, it completes simple form and enter. Now this will take a long time because it is solving. Uh, this. Suppose you want to stop it, you type control Z. So temporarily it will get stopped. So time, so it is solving from scrolling up now. So it shows the various time of scrolling down now. So it's temporarily stopped. Okay. So if you, if you type control Z, it will temporarily stop the execution. If you want to continue execution, type FG. FG means foreground. So whatever you stop will start running now. 
So this takes uh, quite a while because it is just solving over multiple iterations and then it looks for the convergence. So once the convergence criteria is met, you have to set the convergence criteria. In this case, it has already been set by the default uh, this one. And uh, notice that the time uh, initially was one second. It has come up to 287 seconds and it has converged. The simple solution has converged with all these parameters. You don't need to worry about these things now. Essentially that we have created a tutorial file, created the mesh, and then run an open form solver and it is all solved now successfully. Now we want to view those results. And for that, what you have to do is use the para view. Now there is a a uh, custom version of open forms uh, para view, which is called as para form. Instead of calling para view, it's called as a para form. So what para form will do, it's set up all the open form files in a format that uh, para view can understand. So what you have to type is para form and, and one ampersand. So the, you can type para form and an ampersand. Now, if you don't type ampersand, then you will not get the prompt back to you. Now, if you type ampersand, you will get back the prompt. Okay, so you got back para capital four. So whenever you see an error like this, command not found or something, which means that this command does not exist. You might have made a spelling mistake or the package is not installed. So I made a spelling mistake, uh, small f. It has to be capital F. So if I type enter, I got the prompt back. So the prompt is back to me. And also I have the para view window. Okay. So on the para view window, what you need to do is click on apply here. You can't make out anything. Then you go to the second widget row below the menu. This is the menu. This is the first widget row. This is the second widget row. And this VTK block colors. You click on that and select the velocity. So these are the various variables that are available for plotting. U is the velocity, P is the pressure. Let's select velocity. So now this is the initial time. After that, you have to hit on the play button. So the play button is here and the time is here. Right? So I have uh, initial uh, time at zero. And if I play, so it has um, solved it up to, it has just uh, shown me an animation from here up to 287. So this is the final velocity magnitude. So velocity magnitude plotted along this uh, geometry. There is some velocity here. There is a st certain step change here. So the velocities are very low here and high here. High is uh, uh, red color, blue is low color. So we'll see more of this later, but this is just a uh, initial introduction to making sure that everything works. So this is very important. You need to get all these things uh, set up and working. Only then we'll be able to proceed to uh, our detailed tutorials. Uh, finally, um, we need to remember that a lot of open phone thing is done through command line and all the parameters are not set in a graphic user interface, like you might have in Fluent or Comsol, you have to set it in a file, which is a text file. And remember, text files in uh, uh, open form uh, have to be edited using terminals. So let us see how to, uh, we'll see how to edit uh, files later, but currently let us see how to um, view what are the contents. Like for example, there are various files. So this is physical properties is a file under the directory called constant. So I come to this, I type ls. So in this directory, let me clear it for you, ls. So I have several directories. I have 0, 100, 200, 200. These are all time instances. And then there is a file called all run. Then there is a constant directory post-processing directory and system directory. Uh, blue means it's a directory. The green means it is a command file. It's a file, but it is also a command, which can be typed. It's called an executable. 
So if I want to see, uh, there's a file called physical properties under this constant directory. So I type cat constant tab uh, phy tab. So I don't have to type it fully, just type tab. So cat means concatenate. It will just take all the contents from there and throw it on the terminal. So here you see that the uh, this uh, file has got the viscosity defined. So viscosity of uh, air is there as 10 power uh, minus 5. Oh, this is probably viscosity of water. So this, uh, uh, kinematic viscosity is given as 10 power minus 5. So this is used for setting properties. Similarly, if I want to see uh, what is there in this file called control deck, so I can also use another command called more. So because this is a small file, everything I could see. Suppose I do the same thing cat uh, system control deck. So a lot of things came up. So if I'm scrolling up now, you see that there is a lot of things that is there. So you cannot see what came and what left. Of course, you can scroll up and see, but if the files are large, you can't do this. So for that, we have this command called more. So more system control deck. So what does it? It'll just page in it. So first page, at the end of the first page, it'll stop. Say another 50% is there. You type space bar. You can see this. Suppose you want to type, uh, if you want to quit it, you any any time the first first page, the second page, any anywhere. Type Q, and that will quit. A third way is to use the command called less. So let us look at another file called system called FV schemes. So I type less system FV schemes. So what this will allow you is to go up and down. So I can use my cursor keys to go down or up. In case of more, you can just go only in one direction is the forward direction. Less is the opposite of more, which will allow both forward and reverse direction. So you can try all these things to get used to the commands. To summarize, we saw uh, how to use simple uh, Linux commands in the context of running open form. Uh, we saw that all the commands are executed inside a directory. A directory is essentially what we call in Windows as folders. And you need to know which directory you are in, and you need to be able to uh, navigate to different directories. We also ran a simple open form solver and viewed the results. Um, you need to practice all these things. So please uh, replay the video, pause it at uh, different places and reproduce all the commands that have been given. You can also use the slides, the link for which is given below and to reproduce all these commands at least a couple of times so that it is uh, there in your memory and you can use it for actual running of the code. Thank you.